So we're back. I think we might have lost some of you. So I think this is a five of you here. I don't know what happened there. Internet was fine at this end. So I don't quite know whether that was something. We've lost Abby. So we've taken um, Abby's zoom off uh, in case that was using too much bandwidth. Um, but anyway, so hopefully you've got you back. Uh, we need others to reload. Happy if you can hear, can you ask, let me just ask um, to put a note on to reload. I'll just, thank you, um, Kane, appreciate your help. I'll just ask Abby to send a note to get others to reload. Thank you, Kane. You were quick to get back. First time that's happened in 10 quizzes now. Oh, hi again, Brandon. Welcome back everyone, sorry for that interruption, we'll just wait a few minutes for anyone else to rejoin and reload. So we've not got many people, oh. People coming back. Hi there. I think the first eight quizzes we had no gremlins at all, and then we've had gremlins last week and then gremlins this week. So maybe uh, the broadband's being tested. Hola. Thank you very much for saying that. Matthew Craig Taylor. It's always annoying when that happens, particularly when Abby's in London. So we've lost Abby, but there's a memento on the screen. So you can see Abby static, but that's not a live picture, as you've probably told tell by now. <laughs> yes, probably another attack. We'll just wait another couple of minutes. That's okay with you just to allow others to rejoin and then we'll continue with the answers to round two and then round three. So, so far for the people who are back, who, did we get all the answers for round two? That's the quietest I've seen Abby for a long time actually, and just sitting still there as well, so. So I'm not sure whether others are trying to reload or... <laughs> I'll just give it another few minutes in case people are trying to reload. There's an echo, Josh. Oh, we're climbing up again. Yes, if only I could get them to you. So I think we'll carry on. Um, we can always go back if others join and they miss the answers. We'll, we'll go carry on now with, um, for those of you who are back, with the round three answers. So round three, question one, answers. Embro 175, of course. Round three, question two, the Vixen break. I think that maneuver's been in the Red Arrows display for a long time. Anyway, the Vixen break. 
Round three, question three, Southampton, of course. Did you know one of those, if, when you're allowed out to have one of those um, geeky sessions, did you know that in Southampton at one point between the 1910 and 1960, I think there were 26 aircraft manufacturers based around the city? Round three, question four, half a point each. The Israeli aircraft industries, Astra and the Beach Jet 400. Round three, question five, name this person. So maybe a bit difficult to, to work out, but of course, well, it was Roy Chadwick and a bit of a point here that he started off as a personal assistant and a draftsman and then ended up designing the Lancaster and the Vulcan amongst many others. So just shows what can change as someone from where someone starts off in a job and then end up probably one of the most iconic aircraft designers. Yes, but with everything that's go going on, Josh, yes, of course. Oh. Abby says no, is that right? Oh, anyway, you can sort it out between yourselves, Josh and Abby. <laughs> Round three, question six, David Ben-Gurion. Uh, I think he was the first prime minister of Israel. The Tel Aviv airport is named after Ben-Gurion airport. Round three, question seven, the Fokker 70. I assume that's probably Vienna. Don't actually know, actually. Should ask James. James is on tonight. I think he's going to watch it on catch up. Round three, question eight. The Firebirds. So the RF Lightning Display Team were known as the Firebirds. I assume out of um, memory of the, R of the Lightning aircraft, which had a bit of a tendency to catch fire. So, and of course, all the reheat of nine Lightnings taking off. It was a bit deafening. So round three, question eight, worth looking up on YouTube if you can find it. Round three, question nine, Bill and Hillary Clinton. It's a bit of a cumbersome name for an airport. So it's called Bill and Hillary Clinton Airport. We didn't get anyone who said that they'd been to Little Rock, Arkansas Airport. So no bonus points there. Round three, question 10, this is then MD-83 and it's Spanair. Dave, I think, said jump seated on this and um, I'm not sure whether we decided there were any bonus points or not, but this is Palmer Airport in the background. Round three, question 11, Igor Sikorsky Airport. He designed, of course, most of the, uh, the famous helicopters or started off that company and then also uh, he designed quite a lot of aircraft as well. Round three, question 12, is the Airbus A300-600 or just Airbus A300 is fine as far as I'm concerned. DHL, of course. Famous British wing manufactured in Broughton. Or is it Filton? One of the two. Round three, question 13. Federico Fellini is the Italian film director that the Rimini Airport is named after. I couldn't honestly Perhaps I should know some films that were directed by Federico Fellini, but I don't. But Abby, if she was on Zoom now, as opposed to a, a pinned cardboard cutout on the screen in front of you, could probably tell you. Round three, question 14. Bit of a clue in the photograph anyway, but is Air Berlin? Bit of an iconic livery. I think that was also at Palmer Airport with the famous windmills in the background. Round three, question 15. The Duke of York. It was the first UK Royal Pilot in 1919. Wasn't apparently a very accomplished pilot, according to the instructor. If I'm allowed to say that without being uh, sent to the tower. But um, he was the first UK Royal Pilot. Round three, question 17, the quadraplane. Four or more wings of similar spans. I believe a biplane... Uh, is the, has to have one wing that is the same wing across the top with two separate wings underneath. I think that's the difference. Someone will, will correct me if I'm wrong. So we, as you know, we got these round in the wrong order. I did. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the first businessman was Gordon Selfridge. So Gordon Selfridge decided, the original Mr. Selfridge, that he needed to go to Dublin and decided to charter an aeroplane to uh, do what was apparently the first uh, business aircraft. Don't actually know what type it was. Round three, question 18, KC-135. 
or the 707 to, to most other people, but the KC-135 military designation. Question 19, so the Cessna Caravan became a pretty large all-electric aircraft to fly. Of course, a bit of a rush now to beat that in terms of what could be the, the biggest, bigger aircraft than that. And I think a, uh, a, a Channel Islands consultant is trying to get an islander, an electric islander flying, I think, as well, for inter-island flying. And then the last question of the quiz, this rather troublesome quiz from a tech point of view, I'm afraid. Round three, question 20, is a fenestron. So the enclosed tail rotor on a helicopter is called a fenestron. So a total of 22 points up for grabs with the uh, official bonus points. So a total of 53 for the uh, quiz so far, or the total for the quiz. So um, please post your scores. Interested to see who got on and any feedback that you have in terms of too difficult, too easy, more of a particular type um, and assuming that you want us to carry on doing these uh, and we don't have any more tech issues then happy to do this again next week if, if you feel that the timing could be improved or day of the week better more than happy to uh, oh but you were in late Dave weren't you oh sorry was, was it a bit too difficult then so uh, feedback welcome happy to take feedback if you want more questions of a particular type then always happy to, to take that that um, that feedback. But hopefully you all had fun, because that's the main objective anyway, is to have fun, uh, to get past all the technical gremlins, and also to um, celebrate aviation and all of the history that we have. Round three was savage. Oh, sorry, King. I'll have to uh, look at it again. So if you're all up for it, then we'll be happy to tune in again um, next week. Um, say so happy to vary the time, happy to vary the day if it if it suits. Um, and perhaps next week is probably the last before most people maybe get a chance to go back to work. So we can always review how we get on in terms of keeping it going. But we'll keep it going as long as you want to um, to keep it going. And uh, we'll leave the comments live for a while so you can actually uh, continue to post scores. More Thomas Cook questions. Oh, thank you, Kane. Thank you for all the nice comments. I mean, that's what that's what keeps it going as far as I'm concerned. We we'll continue to do it for as long as you want it to be done. It's fun to do. And uh, if you know of anyone who wants to look at it, it's free and it should be on YouTube, even if it's in two parts tonight. So I'll say good night. Abby has already said good night uh, from London. And uh, keep posting if you want to. We'll put the, uh, the music on, the next week music, and uh, see you all soon. Thanks very much. Keep safe. Thank <laughs> you.